and welcome to this video looking at the four new filter types introduced in Yuhi's Hive 2.1. This is a free update for version 2 owners, but if you're still running version 1, have a look at Yuhi's website for upgrade information. The update adds support for Apple M1, a new skin and various improvements such as new filter modulation targets and 100 new presets, a few of which I'll be looking at to help examine the new filter modes. So let's get straight to it and look at the first new filter, the comb filter. Wikipedia defines a comb filter as being implemented by adding a delayed version of a signal to itself, causing constructive and destructive interference. The frequency response of a comb filter consists of a series of regularly spaced notches, giving the appearance of a comb. So if we look at another plugin, Vital, we can see that it visually displays the notches of the comb to help give you an idea as to what's going on. And if I reduce the resonance, you'll see that it's reducing effectively the, uh, the length of the notches in the comb filter. One way to think of a comb filter is as a generator of sound, much like the comb filters in Yuhi Zebra. However, in Hive, if we feed the filter with white or pink noise, we can hear the filter acting on all frequencies, and the end result is much like a guitar or a harp-like tone. So let's have a look at a Howard Scar patch, Comb Harp. Here we can see pink noise is being used as the source, um, and it's being fed into a comb filter. The comb filter in high varies from the norm slightly, in that it allows the fading in of a second delay tap when the ratio is set between 1 and 50, and values above 50 lengthen both delay times. So the plucked nature of the sound is coming from the envelope shape, and by varying the uh, damp and the ratio controls, we can vary the sound from a harp-like sound to a harpsichord-like sound. But if the source of the sound is pink noise, how are we playing it? Well, the answer is by a combination of key follow and the cutoff value. If you've ever set a filter that self-oscillates to whistle as it goes up and down the keyboard, then the technique is the same. Though if we reduce the resonance, we're effectively shortening the teeth of the comb. As we gradually reduce resonance, we get an effect similar to muting the strings of a guitar. So if we reduce the key follow, and I'll play middle C, we'll see that... Uh, Every key will therefore default to the same effect. We're hearing the exactly what the comb filter is doing. By tracking the, uh, the filter using the key follow, we can get the pitch effect. So if I reselect the original sound, the original comb harp, and I reduce the resonance, remember we're reducing the length of those, of the combs. We're getting an effect similar to muting the strings. And with resonance back up again, we're getting the full. The full release of the sound. So now we know the basics of comb filtering. If we look at the next patch, HS Sticky Clav, we can see that the bandpass filter is giving us the wah effect on filter 2. And the comb filter is taking white noise as the source, and by applying key follow and cut off and a spiky envelope, we can generate the body of the clav sound. The second filter is called Dissonant and is a variation on the regular comb filter with a 4x4 feedback delay network. This lends itself well to metallic sounds and percussion instruments. So if we look at this sound, HS chipping, you'll see that the filter is being fed from uh, oscillator 1 and sub 1 uh, from white noise and a triangle wave. The filter is set to dissonant, and if we reduce the damping effect we'll hear more of the uh, dissonance being introduced. The pitch is being given from our old friend key follow that we looked at in the last patch, and similarly, if we adjust the cutoff, we will get um, we will lose the uh, the tuning. So if I bring up the ratio, 
you can hear the different dissonant tones being generated. Another example of the dissonant filter is the patch HS Kiss Beat, which sounds like this. So well, let's just mute um, oscillator one there and listen to this side, which is the dissonant filter. It's being triggered from the shape sequencer. And again, if we adjust the, uh, the damping, we can hear the metallic type dissonant frequencies. being generated as we go from what like a zap sound to more metallic frequencies. So um, a distant filter more for special effects or percussion type sounds. The third filter is reverb, another variation of a comb filter, this time with a longer delay to emulate ambient spaces or resonant voices. The easiest way to hear this in action is with the patch HS Ring Slicer. If I bypass the filter, you'll see that function 1 is set to envelope mode and triggering the oscillators. So if I switch the filter back to reverb, you can hear the effect. So you hear that metallic effect uh, being brought in, and if I reduce the damping the higher frequencies are being allowed through. So excellent for bells, uh, metallic sounds, but with a reverb characteristic. The final type of filter is sideband, and rather than based on delay times, it's based on a type of amplitude modulation. The end result is a sort of frequency shifter. So if we have a listen to this patch, HS Blissful Steps. Lovely patch. If I bring up the mix on the sideband filter, you'll hear that sort of uh, frequency shifting effect. Finally, as we're looking at the filters, there's a new hidden parameter, filter spread. There are a few hidden parameters in Hive to save the user interface getting too cluttered. To call it up, simply right click on the matrix and select filter spread for the required filter. So in order to appreciate what's going on, you'll probably need to hear this in stereo. But as I sustain, say, a chord... You can look at the display. And see the changes of the sound going on in the left and right. So adjusting this, the uh, stereo spread of the, uh, of the filter. You can, of course, assign that to an LFO, so let's do that. Let's click on there, select LFO 1, which is a very slow triangle waveform, uh, 10 seconds. So let's, uh, let's do that now. Play a chord again. And again, if you keep your eyes on the waveform, you'll see that... You'll see the movement that that's introducing to the, uh, to the overall sound. If you do want to learn more about modulation in Hive 2, do check out our earlier video where we go into a lot more depth on modulation. Whilst on the subject of the user interface, you can right-click anywhere upon it and select Ismo. Ismo is their new skin, and whilst I do like the look of it, at the moment I keep coming back to the original skin for familiarity. So that's a look at the four new filter types in Hive 2.1. Please share and subscribe, it doesn't cost anything, and it helps me to produce more videos like this in the future. So until the next video, thanks for watching.